Hi, and welcome to another episode of Behind the Wheel. We're inside the National Motor Museum. It's quite a special one today. I'm here with a 1928 or 1929 Chamberlain 8. Now, this is one of the prettiest, one of the most famous, and one of the most innovative Australian vehicles ever built, in my opinion. It was built by a couple of young engineers from Melbourne. The names were Bill and Bob Chamberlain. If you know the name, Chamberlain later, in their later life, they went on and built tractors. Uh, Chamberlain and John Deere tractors, known to many of us. Um, but when they were young, budding engineers, they wanted to get their hands into the racing scene of the time, which was quite an exciting thing to be involved in. And this is what they entered it with, which was obviously made quite a bang. Now I'm going to pass over to my colleague Matt. He'll tell you a little bit more about what it was like in that 1920s, 1930s Australian racing scene. Hi, I'm Matthew. I'm one of the curators here at the National Motor Museum. So, just talking about this as an Australian special. Um, start of the 20th century, weren't many racing cars in Australia. A few imported ones that used to be uh, ex-European race cars, so if you had a bit of money you could bring a car in and race, but a lot of people didn't have that sort of money. So they started building what they called specials. Specials were built out of basically anything that was around and available, and it meant trying to get the most out of whatever you could get. So you get a chassis from one car, suspension, engine from another, put it all together, see how it went, make some changes. And there were a lot of specials that were built in Australia at that time. The difference with this one is it was built from scratch. Um, so basically they didn't take a lot of componentry from other cars, they built it all out of what, out of bits that they could uh, design and build themselves. Probably the most important thing is this has a space frame chassis in it, which is really unusual for that period. Normally they were built on a ladder chassis, motor, engine, etc. just added. Whereas this is actually a whole body, like, a, like an aircraft. Um, so very light, and it's probably one of the first of the space frame chassis in the world. And it was built by Bob Chamberlain and his uh, friend Eric Wright, and uh, they constructed it all. Interestingly enough, they also made it front wheel drive, one of the few front wheel drive cars of that time. Miller in America was playing with front wheel drive, but basically most things were rear wheel drive. So it worked reasonably well. They used a motorcycle engine, Indian Daytona motorcycle engine to start with. Uh, they ran reasonably successfully at a few small events and then they ran at the Grand Prix. I don't think they finished uh, in a couple of instances, but eventually the engine was taken out and used on something else. So then they went to building their own engine, so we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, so here we are folks with the Chamberlain 8 engine. Um, it was built by Bill Chamberlain when his brother Bob left and went to England to look at the manufacture and design of pistons. So Bill created the engine. Now, we were lucky enough when we had this out to have Ernest Sotera, who happened to be one of the last people to race this car in any anger, talk about the engine and describe how it works. So I'll leave Ernest to talk to you about that. Hello again folks, we're uh, again here with Ernest looking at the actual Chamberlain 8 engine uh, which is laid out in front of us here. Uh, you'd like to tell us a few of the features of it Ernest and maybe a bit of a background of actually having run it. Right, I think the first thing that strikes you is the massive supercharger on the front here and the massive carburetor. It's because the engine ran on methanol um, and when we actually got it running, we never ran it with this carburetor. Uh, it was just too difficult. We didn't have access to methanol um, at the time. So we put a Stromberg carburetor on it and um, got the mixture right. Um, very hard to see from this. As I say, it's called the Chamberlain 8. You'll notice the eight, four exhaust pipes on each side and uh, spark plugs on each side, so eight spark plugs. Um, but only four keeping cylinders. And only four cylinders. So it's, it's an opposed piston. So there's a piston at the bottom and a piston at the top, and they come together, and it's a two-stroke. Yep. So each piston opens and closes a port, um, so as, it's, as the pistons are driven apart. Now that means you've got to have a crankshaft at the top and a crankshaft at the bottom, and they're geared together down the back of the engine. So it's like two short motors, Face to face. So it's almost like an upright Subaru motor that's been turned <laughs> that way. Sort of, yeah, sort of, yeah. yeah. But the pistons come together and drive apart. Knocker. So more like a common knocker. Common knocker motor, yeah. yeah. More like a common knocker. Um, 
Obviously these are the intake tubes, these are the blow-off valves, so if the pressure from the supercharger gets too, too great, it actually pops those. Yep. You've heard, you've heard the modern um, turbo cars going bop, 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 well, this did the same sort of thing. Just wanna... So what was the approximate CC capacity, can you remember roughly? It wasn't all that large, but I can't, it was around 1500. Right, yeah, so it's not a big motor by any stretch of the imagination. And extracting an enormous amount of power, again, uh, for a short amount of time, so... Sure. Uh, now, this engine being as complicated as it was, meant two things. It's extremely fast for its time, it was also extremely temperamental, which meant that for things like Australian Grand Prix, it was no good. It couldn't, it couldn't be reliable for a long enough period to actually compete in a Grand Prix. What I was really good at was hill climbs, because hill climbs only last a minute or two. Um, so this car actually had a lot of success for quite a long time. I think the very first time it won a hill climb was when it had its original engine in about 1930 uh, or 1931, uh, and it won its last one, I think, in the late 50s or the early 60s even. And that's a very long career for a race car if you think of how quickly technology adapts. Um, so I guess a lot of people see this car as being a great story of success. A lot of people see it, see it as being a great story of failure. It had lots and lots of failures. It had moderate success, really, if you look at it. It's not, it's not one of the most prestigious racing titles in Australia, but what it really does show is that ingenuity of a couple of young engineers is very indicative of what was happening in Australia at the time. And what uh, two engineer brothers and their mates, basically, could do um, uh, applying their ingenuity. So I have a personal, very strong affection for this car, and that's because I actually was able to negotiate its purchase for the National Motor Museum. Uh, we received a federal grant and a state government grant, but most importantly, or I guess uh, uh, what most makes it feel good for us is that you guys helped to purchase it. Uh, it was actually fundraised through the front counter and through donations um, that, that made the purchase of it possible. So here it is, it's one of our star exhibits. Now, the engine's sitting outside of the car, so you've probably figured it out by now. You're not going to see me or Nigel drive this car today. Uh, but we have unearthed recently uh, some extremely special and extremely cool footage uh, of uh, I think it's Bob Chamberlain testing the car in about 1928-29 when it was just being built. So please enjoy the footage and I hope you've enjoyed watching this 1928-29 Chamberlain 8 special. 